Hey guys, um, so today I'm going to talk about SSRIs. Somebody asked me online recently about um, their experiences of they've been on SSRIs for a while and they're trying to come off it. So they're having some difficulties, they've been off it for a while and they're seeing that um, they had a sort of a very, very difficult withdrawal period and now they're they have this sense that maybe they're not going to be the same as they were before. Um, they feel like you know there's a constant lack of motivation, a sense of apathy, a feeling like even if the house was on fire, they would struggle to move to, or they certainly wouldn't have that sense of urgency. Um, so they're kind of afraid that there may have been damage done. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about SSRIs. I'm going to talk about you know their prevalence of how they're used to treat depression. Um, and other things as well so there's a good bit in this one now let me start off by saying that my field is not psychiatry uh, my field is psychology um, and I work more in talk therapies psychotherapy counseling things like that um, and do I feel bad that I can't prescribe any of these medications these uh, antipsychotic medications to be honest no I do not because even if I could, um, and again, do not take any of this as medical advice, it certainly isn't. But even if I could, I would not prescribe um, anyone to take SSRIs, and I'll talk about why. I think they're very, very dangerous. Okay, there's a lot of risks involved with them. Okay, an awful lot of people are on these antidepressant medications now. Some of the statistics I have here are from an American uh, American research because most of the, the best research has been done in America now they might be a little bit ahead of us in terms of the prevalence but what I'm seeing even now with the people I'm talking with and working with is that more and more people are uh, being prescribed these medications for things like anxiety even uh, for um, you know behavioral issues that you mightn't even think were anything uh, necessarily bad okay but one in four, sorry, one in ten Americans are now on SSRIs, and that's one in four women between uh, in their forties and fifties. That's one in four, so that's a huge, huge amount of people. Now, over the last two decades, there's been a four hundred percent increase in the use of SSRIs, four hundred percent. So what I'm saying here today in this video is a little bit, a sort of a word of caution, um, and a word of a sort of a sense of what have we done here okay um, was it appropriate to do this did we have enough knowledge about what these medications were doing to the brain and I would argue that we didn't um, because we all know about the, the side effects and everything of, of these SSRIs but it's even more than that and I'll get into that now in a second um, so this whole thing, we'll just talk about serotonin. This is just one of the neurotransmitters, and obviously SSRIs, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, um, are used with the focus of serotonin is the important neurotransmitter, right? And so why do we think serotonin? Um, if you're taking on this medical model approach that serotonin um, is the neurotransmitter, and there is evidence to show that, that serotonin is very very important in in your brain in a healthy brain okay serotonin sero means blood and tonin literally means tightening so blood tightening so what do we think about when we think of that we think of hypertension we think of blood clotting okay these are two fundamental signs of the body's response to stress okay so immediately we know that serotonin it's got something to do with stress and maybe how your body and your brain help you regulate stress help you regulate you know the the fight or flight response um, your general mood anxiety levels and also things like when is it appropriate to, to, for a person to go numb sometimes that can be like a coping mechanism okay now serotonin there's another hormone in the brain it's very similar to this called melatonin and melatonin you might know is used when you want to go to sleep okay so when it gets dark at night the blue light that's going through your retina into your brain, um, the light goes down and your brain gets the message, time to go to sleep, releases melatonin and it essentially knocks you out. That's how you go to sleep. Now melatonin is actually derived from serotonin, okay? So 
If you've got problems with your serotonin levels, you might also have problems with your melatonin, okay? And we know that because people who are depressed have all these sleep problems, sleep disorders, okay? Um, so it's kind of like the opposite of melatonin in a way. Now, serotonin, we tend to think of it in your brain, right? In your, in the, between the synapses in your brain and it's a neurotransmitter. But it's also important for your digestive system, okay? It helps you handle shock and stress. Um, now, also, like, think about that. Again, if serotonin is important for your fight or flight response, if you've got to give a public speaker speech or something like that, right? You will know you get butterflies in your stomach, okay? So serotonin is important for that. It's important in the digestive system. It's not just in the brain, okay? Now, there are things um, we know that affect sort of natural things that affect the serotonin levels in your brain. One of them is, of course, um, sun, okay? The sun has a big impact on this. So sort of the sun, the more daylight you get and you're getting your, um, your vitamin D and all that stuff, that can be used in the production of serotonin. Um, the sun actually turns on serotonin production. So how do we, why do, does that make us think serotonin is important in terms of mood? Well, think of the most depressing time of the year. The most depressing time of the year is January, the third week in January, Blue Monday, okay? It's when we're not getting any light or sunshine, okay? And we get that seasonal affective disorder. So serotonin, that's one of the sort of natural remedies to all of this is get more sunshine, right? Another one is too much sugar. If we've got too much carbohydrate in our body, in our system, um, you know, that impacts our insulin levels, become, become insulin resistant if we eat too much sugar over a prolonged period of time. But there's also a lot of evidence to show that too much um, sugar uh, hurts the serotonin production in our body, okay? Um, so again, what would it be? It would be just not to eat as much sugar, okay? Cut down in the sugar, maybe increase protein, and um, fats, healthy fats in your diet. Now, these are all remedies that are natural, right? Go out and get more sunshine, stop eating so much sugar in your food. Um, now, because these things are natural, these are free, okay? We don't see as much of an emphasis on that. What we're looking for in the medical model is just an intervention, a sort of a molecular one. Let's go in and just replace the serotonin levels or actually inhibit how the brain handles serotonin. That's actually what's happening with SSRIs. It's not actually improving anything, it's inhibiting. But again, I'll come on to that in a bit. So maybe we're not told about these free uh, sort of remedies because you know you can't write a prescription for sunshine, okay? Um, okay, other things, even the emotion of learned helplessness has been linked to serotonin, okay? So if a person has apathy, feels like no matter what they do in life, again, this is associated with depression, right? That's got to do with serotonin, learned helplessness. But this whole thing, why would I be skeptical about you know prescribing or telling somebody to take SSRIs to begin with? Well, first of all, I've spoken to so many people that said they regret it. They had terrible withdrawals. They had things like intense agitation, even hostility. Um, digestive problems, hallucinations, fast fast heartbeats, okay, suicidal ideation, right, um, mood problems. Now, these are all very very real issues, and these are the side effects of the of the treatment itself. So let me just talk a minute here about um, the problem I have with the whole medical model that was applied to psychiatry, right. This was like back in the 80s, before the 80s, when the DSM-3, I think it was, came out. The, the, the manuals for psychiatry were very, very different. There was a lot of uh, terminology in it that would be more reminiscent to Freudian uh, psychoanalysis. Okay, there was psychological terms in it, right? And the problem that the psychiatric field had at the time was, well, they were kind of like the laughing stock of the medical profession okay they were seen as not real doctors so there was this sense that we need to put on the lab coats here we need to get more scientific and also there were other PR problems for the psych uh, psychiatric uh, profession or, or area it was this thing of you know people being committed 
the hospital against her will and there was this whole thing about well you know our psychiatrist sort of impeding on our human rights and again that was something that was a PR problem so what happened in around 1980 with the DSM-3 when that came out the whole thing changed to a medical model it's going to be we are now looking at, at we're going to start classifying depression anxiety all these disorders ADHD as medical problems uh, pathogenic problems diseases of the brain essentially and what we're going to start doing is looking for little molecules that are important and replacing the molecules or reducing the levels of the of the molecule in the brain so a sort of idea of reducing human emotion human motiv uh, human motivation or human happiness to molecules molecular okay now that's an issue now the problem with that is that it's very very simplistic right believe it or not it's very very simplistic first of all a multitude of studies have come out since then showing marginal benefits to any of these SSRIs and over long-term studies that have been done there are no benefits they're similar to placebo no better than a placebo effect okay um, what else was I going to say about this um, the thing is, right, it's the idea is that, well, okay, we can identify if serotonin, for instance, say in depression, is the neurotransmitter that's lacking. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go in and what actually happens is, so here's your two, here's one neuron and here's another one. And they're trying to communicate and they do that with neurotransmitters. They, they drop these little neurotransmitters into the space, okay, serotonin. And serotonin goes over here and then that, that's communication, okay, that's sending a message. Serotonin, you know, if it's too low, if there's a problem with serotonin, um, the idea is that you're going to feel bad, you're going to feel depressed. Now, just simply looking at that, what did what, one of the ways the, 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 the serotonin reuptake inhibitors? There's these little sort of gates, okay, little sort of funnels, that their job, they're on the neurons, and their job is to monitor the, the serotonin level, okay. And when they feel there's enough serotonin, what they do is they start taking some of the serotonin away. It's the body is sort of in in balance. It maintains a balance like this. You don't want too much serotonin, not enough serotonin. And what the inhibitors do is they go in and they just really gum up that those funnels. It's sort of like it's actually disabling part of the neuron. Right? It's not healing anything. It's actively stopping something that was working okay from functioning properly right so this is one of the things we need to be aware of before we make a decision should we take SSRIs right so the problem with that is it's artificial and we don't know nearly as much as we think we do in terms of our ability to manipulate the levels of, of neurotransmitters that are between the synapses of, of, in the neurons right we think we do but we don't right we know very very little about the impact it's having now why did all the research get funded why did it don't why why do we you know so many people think SSRIs are a great option they work they're very effective well the real reason for that is we're desperate right society has become desperate people are desperate they're desperate for anything that would help them alleviate depression because it's a horrible horrible sensation horrible experience to go through depression for a prolonged period of time okay so the depression that's there or the 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 desperate need in our culture for this has led it to get this far without sort of let's hold off for a minute let's uh, do we really understand what we're doing with this do we know what the, the the side effects of it are okay because a person who's depressed and they go to the GP and all they want is just to feel better if if they can give you a prescription it's quick you know it's not cheap necessarily but it's something you know it's like thank god there's hope at least so you will take it right and people take it and then they get um, addicted to it right now the word psychiatrist use is not addiction because psychiatrists maintain that SSRIs are not addictive but really what that is is um, it's semantics because people do become addicted to SSRIs it's very very difficult difficult to come off them the word addiction is where psychiatry sort of uh, makes a distinction. What they say is dependent, right? So is that a distinction? To me, to my mind, that's a distinction without a difference. If you're dependent on something, you're 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 you rely on it, and if you come off it, you're going to feel withdrawal symptoms. 
So they would never use the word addiction, but people are addicted to these things, okay? I've talked to too many people firsthand even that have told me this. So anyway, um, I know I'm kind of all over the shop of this video. There's so much to it and maybe I'll make other videos on this. But what I'm saying here is the SSRIs are going into your brain and they're actually inhibiting the healthy part of your brain, right? And it's artificially controlling the serotonin level. Now, what happens if you come off those SSRIs? Well, first of all, your brain will realize, your brain will have gotten lazy in terms of the generation of serotonin. When you come off SSRIs, your brain is like, how do I make serotonin again? Because while you were taking SSRIs, your other neurotransmitters, uh, your brain said, well, we don't need to make serotonin now, let's make other ser uh, neurotransmitters. That could be potentially a problem. Do you need all those other transmitters, neurotransmitters? but it's forgotten maybe how to make um, serotonin. Okay, so, okay, so what I'm saying here is really it's a sad state of affairs that as a culture, we're all buying, well, a lot of people are buying into this idea that just a prescription will be enough. Okay, I'm doing something about my mental health. And I can see why people think that and why they do that, but it's very, very risky. Okay, and as a long-term option, it's fraught with problems. Okay, first of all, people think, well, you know, I don't want to pay a, a therapist or a counselor, uh, whatever it is per session. It's too expensive. Okay, that's actually not true in, in comparison to taking antidepressants, right? Because think about it this way: most times um, in in, in counselling, psychotherapy or uh, any of the talk therapies you might do, even if it's a CBT course you're doing, it might take you 10 sessions. It might, let's say it even takes you 20 sessions, right? 20 sessions, you're paying your, psych your psychotherapist, your counsellor every week, right? Now that adds up. But at the end of those 20 sessions, it will be hoped that you're feeling better, you've got more resilience, you're more in touch with your emotions, you know how to handle your emotions more. Maybe you've identified some of the stressors. Maybe you've talked about some of the issues that have been troubling with you, troubling you, right? And at that, that time, then you can break off from the psychotherapy. Maybe you can revisit it again whenever you need to or have your counselor there whenever you need them after that. But if you're on antidepressants, you cannot just stop taking antidepressants like that after, say, the period of time that you would have been doing 20 sessions of psychotherapy, right? So in the long run, short term you know the SSRIs the antidepressants seem like they're a cheaper option in the long run they are not okay that money adds up because you don't want to get to the point where you have to start stopping taking SSRIs okay because it's a very very of course you shouldn't take them to begin with is what I'm saying but if you get to the point where you have to stop taking them or you want to stop taking them because of the side effects you're going to find it difficult okay so um I don't know, I think I'll stop there for today. I'm gonna to talk about this more in other videos, right? Um, but if you're considering taking um, antidepressants and you're watching this video, bear in mind there are so many other options before you take that option. Now, why would you take that option? Well, the, the, the only time when it's appropriate to take SSRIs is when you have zero options. When you've you've got to the point in your life where you've had enough, you can't take anymore, and you have zero supports in place. Now, wh when would that happen? Uh, that sadly, that does happen. And when it does happen, and a person is has come to the end of their tether, um, I can understand them taking these antidepressants. Okay, because what it does, what they all do, really, is numb you out. It numbs you out from emotion, keeps you safe. Okay, but. The problem is, oftentimes when people go and they think they have no options, people say, take the SSRIs. And the issue is you do have options, okay? You have a multitude of options. They can be, um, as I've said, psychotherapy, counseling, um, and you can do intensive psychotherapy and counseling if you're really in a bad way. Invest in that. That is not a waste of your money by any stretch of the imagination. There are natural um, courses that you can take, natural, minerals vitamins that will help um, exercise routines anything okay life coaching even that will sort of go in and hands-on show you where you're making mistakes even in just your your, your lifestyle and your um, your diet things like that okay 
So again, I can understand it, but if you're if you're under if you're considering taking SSRIs or anti antidepressants, really trust me and give it a lot of thought before you commit to doing it because it's a big commitment and it's uh, it's it's a decision that's fraught with danger. Okay. So I don't want to be too negative in this. I actually want this video to be more about um, there are other options, okay? You don't have to do this. Um, but anyway, I'll probably make more videos in this soon. And um, I think my next video is going to be about if you've already taken a course of antidepressant medications and you're, you've come off it, maybe you're living with some of the symptoms of it. Okay, I'm going to talk about that in my next video. So guys, um, maybe this is a controversial topic. I know it, it is. Um, but if you've got comments or whatever, just uh, you can leave them below and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay. Um, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.